Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining me. This is Natalie Pace, and today we are going to be exploring how and why Wall Street has been hitting new highs, and why is it focused just on five companies? And are you invested in those five companies? Should you buy into them if you weren't previously invested in artificial intelligence or breakthrough technology? Or are you buying high? Is there a strategy that allows you to do both? Also, we're going to be talking about a few other things, a time-proven 21st century investing strategy that protects you no matter which way the markets go. So will the election keep it soaring higher or is that going to make it go south? And what about higher for longer interest rates? Let's examine all of that. And as always, you can watch this back at youtube.com forward slash Natalie Pace and visit nataliepace.com for more information. So let's go ahead and jump right into my PowerPoint presentation. So can the Fantastic Five continue to carry stocks to new highs? And how can we best profit while protecting ourselves from the volatility? So one thing I wanted to just say is that I am planning on updating the ABCs of Money. The sixth edition will be available, should be available by September. So always be sure that you're getting the latest edition by visiting nataliepace.com. I have a list of all of my books there and you can just click to access the most recent edition. So the sixth edition is upcoming. So NVIDIA is the story on Wall Street. It's up almost six times over the last three years. As you can see, it makes the Dow Jones Industrial Average looks like it has earned nothing. And the truth is without NVIDIA and the other Fantastic Five, which we'll outline for you in just a moment, the S&P 500 last year would have performed less than 10% rather than that 26.3% total return. All of the Magnificent Seven, now it's down to Fantastic Five, last year doubled. So those seven, and what happens when you have just seven companies that are taking stocks to all times highs? Is that a good thing for the market or is that too thin of a concentration? So we'll be talking more about all this. And again, most importantly, how you can apply it for what you are going to do. So this is the um, Magnificent Seven of 2023. Two of those companies have not been doing as well. So let's take a look at which ones those are. Tesla is down 44% from the 52-week high. Now, Tesla is... Still a beloved brand and EVs are still on fire. And the problem is that there are just, um, I mean, the market is flooded with EVs these days. And especially in China, which is the largest market by far for electric vehicles. Now, uh, Tesla is still in the top 10 there, but BYD is by far the biggest by volume producer. Of course, in Europe, just added tariffs, so they're not going to be making um, China e it easy for the Chinese manufacturers. The U.S. has added massive tariffs, so we don't want Chinese EVs here. But the truth is that the Chinese market is the biggest market, so the Chinese EVs can do well in their own market, and it is harming Tesla. So we're going to take a look at that on our stock report card in just a moment. Also, Apple compared to NVIDIA. So as you can see, Apple looks like it hasn't done anything. Of course, it has. it is up 6% on the year a couple of days ago. It's had a rally over the last two days since announcing, announcing that they're going to be partnering with OpenAI and using ChatGPT. But there is a problem with Apple too. And again, it has a little bit to do with China. So two things are happening in China. We already have written blogs on this in the past. The first thing is uh, Apple iPhones are outlawed for government officials. The second thing is Huawei, which is a major Apple competitor, just came out a few months ago with a smartphone that really competes at a lower price. 
So that's not going to uh, be available in the US. We blackballed Huawei. We haven't dropped that. But there are other markets that they sell into, especially in Asia. And with the phones being pretty impressive and lower priced, that is a problem for Apple. So as you can see, Apple has been a little bit on a roller coaster. It was down almost 20% in April. Um, Apple has the largest, the most robust buyback of any of the um, stocks. It's usually about $20 billion every uh, quarter, about $80 billion a year. That's a lot. I mean, that's a massive amount more than most stocks. So, um, you know, Apple can, can stay strong for a while, but you know, they allow their stock to go down in recessions. We have to remember just how far and how fast stocks dropped in the pandemic. We aren't expecting another pandemic, but, you know, there can be a shock where things just drop largely because the equities are pretty overheated. So we're going to take a look at that in a moment. We'll also look at election year trends, so stay with me. So the Fantastic Five really is Microsoft, Alphabet, which of course is Google, Amazon, Meta, which of course is Facebook, and NVIDIA is the rock star. Now, if you want to be invested in these five or in NVIDIA, what might be, and you are not already, the first thing is, if you don't have large cap growth in your portfolio, you are missing out on all these gains because they are low, these are large cap growth stocks. The second thing is we, um, in all of our sample pie charts, always have hot industries. T Breakthrough Technology, the TECB ETF on iShares has been one of our favorites for years. And this is the super performer. It's interesting because the ETF that is actually called artificial intelligence hasn't been performing as well as Tech B. And largely that is because it's the Fantastic Five in Tech B um, in the uh, artificial intelligence one. It's a lot of the artificial, even the very small ones, 2% NVIDIA, whereas Tech B has 8% NVIDIA weighting and the Fantastic Five make up um, over 40% of the, of the ETF. So if you really want to have the Fantastic Five ETF, it's probably a good idea to be in Tech B. Now, if you don't already have it or you don't have large cap growth, rather, again, you want to be age appropriate and then properly diversified rather than just buying high and slamming it in there. And then if the markets fall, losing money, we would recommend um, a dollar cost averaging approach, right? So, um, you know, if it's something that's trading at an all time high, maybe you dollar cost average over two years. So we can talk about that in my private coaching email info at nataliepace.com for pricing and information. But of course, we spend a lot of time talking about that at our financial freedom retreats. And the next one is in October. So do join us. Um, we have a lot of incentives. If you register by June 22nd, I'll be talking about that in a moment. So again, here's the fantastic five stock report card. And as you can see, Tesla um, is losing revenue year over year. That has to do with the price wars and they have to drop their prices. So even if they're selling close to the same amount of cars, they're gonna have lower revenue and lower profit margins. Apple has been losing revenue year over year. Actually, a lot of people are not even aware that the largest smartphone um, by volume worldwide is actually Samsung, not Apple. Apple is number two. And there's a very diversified, I think Xiaomi is number three. So, um, you know, this is a beloved brand, but lots of competition, a lot of which is much more affordable. And of course, China has outlawed it in certain arenas as well. So again, the NASDAQ is doubling the performance of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So if you don't have that large cap growth, you really are missing out. Uh, the iShares Breakthrough Technology ETF is almost tripling the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And as a reminder, I just want to say one of the most important things that we can do for our portfolio is the regular rebalancing. And that is become, because 
the 2023 super performers were the worst performers of 2022. So as you can see, the NASDAQ lost 33% in 2022, and then the Magnificent Seven, those stocks uh, doubled. Tesla was down 66% in 2022, and then it doubled in 2023, and now it's down again another 40%. So this is quite a roller coaster for these super performing stocks. You protect yourself from the volatility by being age appropriate, properly diversified, and rebalancing once, twice, or three times a year. Again, this is a time-proven 21st century strategy that puts you on the right side of the trade, prompts you to capture gains at the high, buy more at the low, and takes the emotions out of it. We'll talk a little bit more about what that pie chart looks like and how you can get your own free personalized pie chart web app that we offer, info at nataliepace.com, but we'll talk more about it in just a moment. So what about the election years? If you look at you know, the 10-year trend, the election year is about 13%. We're already there. So uh, not, you know, wouldn't pretend that we would be doing a great deal more. But I think um, there is something that we should be aware of, right? On that larger trend, the longer trend, the uh, performance is much lower than we've already seen today. So why is that? Well, in the in 2000, we saw the beginning of the big slide. NASDAQ composite index dropped 78% between March of 2000 and October of 2002. That means $1 million went down to $220,000. That's going to change your life in a very horrible and negative way. In 2008, which was another election year, the Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped 55%, so a million dollars went down to 450,000, right? Took seven and a half years, well, almost seven, for the Dow to come back after the Great Recession, a lot of financial stimulus. It took 15 years for the NASDAQ to recover. So it's really important to always make sure that you have enough safe and that you know it's safe in a debt world where bonds lost even more than stocks did in 2022. So if we go back to this chart, long-term government bonds lost 26%. That has a lot to do with why those banks failed, but they also can be in your portfolio. So even if you have told your financial advisor that you're conservative and that financial advisor might even say, oh, you're earning 5%. You have to know how to read your own statements because you could have lost principal by trying to earn that 5%. In today's world, you can actually earn 5% safely, but it's tricky. We spend one full day on how to get safe in our financial freedom retreats. So do join us or get a personal um, you know, second opinion, which is unbiased. I don't sell financial products. Uh, email info at nataliepace.com for pricing and for information. So will higher for longer interest rates hurt? So, you know, investors keep wanting rate cuts, but the feds are saying maybe one rate cut in 2024. That is not gonna dramatically help stocks. It's not gonna help bonds very much either. So us all hoping and praying and the stocks going up when we think we're gonna get a rate cut and them going down when we think we're not, the truth is you actually should be always properly diversified and capturing gains once, twice, or three times a year. That way you can kind of step off the Wall Street roller coaster and enjoy your life and your vacation. Before I went on vacation, I would make sure that I had battened down the hatches of my financial house, though, whether you do it through private coaching or looking at your personalized pie chart, if you know how to do your own pie chart yourself. Um, it's a good idea to do that. So again, is this economy as strong as you're led to believe? A lot of people are aware of how much we have in public debt, and they are not aware of the total debt and loans of $99 trillion. Consumer debt is higher than it's ever been. Corporate debt is higher than it's ever been. So it's pretty important to be aware of this, but even more important to know how to 
um, react to that, right? Also, stocks are very expensive. So I already told you what happened in the dot-com recession. And the only time when stocks were more expensive than they are today was in the dot-com recession. Uh, stocks are more expensive today than they were in the Great Depression in 1929. Now, when we have over-elevated equity prices, when there's a shock, they tend to fall far and fast. So in 2020, in the pandemic, we saw that it was the fastest that a bear market, a bull market had gone to a bear market. Stocks dropped 35% in one month. So the only way that you're protecting yourself from that is being age appropriate, keeping a percent equal to age safe. We're actually overweighting 20% in our sample pie charts right now based on very high equity prices, massive amount of debt and very slow growth economy, only expected to do about 2.1% GDP in this year. So this is what a sample pie chart looks like for a 30 year old. If you wanna personalize your own, again, we do have a free web app, just email info at nataliepace.com. So keep a percent equal to your age safe. We're overweighting 20% safe in our samples based on the reasons I just outlined. Uh, so you're gonna act a little older. That means that you only have this particular 30 year old 50% at risk. Obviously if you're 50, then you would only have 30% at risk. If it goes down by half, you've lost 15% instead of half. Also we're leaning into HOTS. And again, we have been doing this now. If you have had tech B in your portfolio and one slice is now three, maybe consider selling two slices high, keep that money and have one hot slice. If it keeps going up, great. And if it goes down, you have the liquidity and the emotional fortitude to buy more at a lower price. And both are very important. I'm gonna show you why in just a moment. So tithe to your investment retirement accounts religiously, tithe 10%. Remember that rich people don't put money in jars, they put them into tax protected retirement accounts and other tax protected vehicles. So this is something that we should all be getting a lot more familiar with. Um, our individual retirement accounts offer us more financial freedom, that's where we can put our HOTS. So we definitely want to have both. We can talk about how to do that. And we do in our financial freedom retreats, but I also do it in my private coaching. As I said, always keep a percent equal to your age safe, not in stocks. Overweight or underweight safe based on market conditions. Know what safe is. Bonds lost more than stocks in 2022, long-term government bonds. Diversify into 10 funds. Now what we've done here small, medium, large, value and growth and four HOTS. And you might see that we're doing value replacements. And that's another reason it, when stocks are at all time highs, nothing's on sale. Plus when there's so much debt, a lot of that is concentrated in the value funds. We have found certain countries where you have lower risk with maybe even double the yield. So you can um, you know, get greater performance for lower risk. That's pretty unusual and always desirable. So again, there are other things, but one of the most important thing is rebalance at least once a year, up to three times a year, but not, you know, every day looking at your portfolio at the red lights or the green lights. That is putting you, uh, letting your emotions be in charge. And when emotions are in charge of investing, usually you're on the wrong side of the trade. And here is why. So emotions are not our friend in investing. As you can see here, when everybody is excited about stocks like they are right now, AI, I'm going to buy NVIDIA. I'm going to buy NVIDIA. That's actually when you should be capturing gains. You know, I've been telling you, if you have um, had Tech B, which we've used as a hot example for years in our financial freedom retreat, you know, you would actually be capturing gains. It wouldn't be all or nothing right? You wouldn't say, okay, I'm going to sell everything. You'd still want a hot slice of AI and breakthrough technology. But if you have three, sell those two. So again, at the low, when everybody thinks that the, you know, we're in some sort of depression and most people have lost too much money. Most people don't buy low because they can't buy low. They lost too much money. 
their credit score is ruined. They might even be at, in danger of losing their home, especially if they bought that high too. So again, don't let your portfolio rebalancing be at a whim of whether stocks are high or you're worried that you're going to lose everything. Instead, always have the right plan. Always be age appropriate and properly diversified so that you can capture gains at the high and buy at the low. And it is easy as a pie chart. Again, Gary Becker, who's one of the most uh, revered economists of all time, sadly, we did lose him. He was a Nobel Prize winning economist. He actually wrote the foreword, the preface to put your money where your heart is, my first book, enthusiastically recommending it. And it really does work. So email us at info at nataliepace.com. We have a 2024 investor IQ test, a rebalancing IQ test. Those are free, by the way. Just email and say you would like those two uh, tests and we're happy to send them to you. We also have, as I already mentioned, the free pie chart web app where you can personalize your own sample pie chart. We also have a Thrive Budget web app where you can personalize your own budget as well. Now, our next retreat is going to be October. And if you register by June 22nd, you get the best price and you get a free 50-minute private prosperity coaching session valued at $400. Email info at nataliepace.com or call 310-430-2397. You definitely want to register for the retreat now. Um, it's three full days. It's going to transform your life. It's a complete money makeover. Most people learn how to save thousands annually. And of course, protecting your wealth and growing it properly with a time-proven 21st century plan is a game changer. That could be hundreds of thousands for many of us. So again, the, the plan is easy as a pie chart. This is Nilo and Bill. I drew a, a simple pie chart on a napkin and they were able to earn gains when most people around them lost more than half in the Great Recession. So do take advantage of these free personalized pie chart web apps, the free investor IQ test, rebalancing IQ test. And also I wanna say we're doing a real estate masterclass this Saturday. So if you want to buy a home, if you want to sell a home, if you're thinking about buying abroad, if you'd like to Airbnb, the real estate, you want to be informed before you do any of this. And the real estate broker is a broker salesman. So they want to sell you something. There's a lot of information that you are not going to get from them that you should be getting from us. Now, also with regard to real estate, one two statistics I want to leave you with. One is homeowners are worth 10 times what renters are. So the average wealth of a homeowner in the US was over half a million. The average wealth of renters is 50,000. The other statistic that's really important is that 20 million homes were lost in the Great Recession. So buying high is a problem. Like a lot of people say you should buy because it's cheaper than renting and all they'll give you all these reasons. But if you buy high and the value drops below your mortgage, the bank becomes a very, very much of an adversary and your credit score goes in the toilet. And honestly, you're stuck there if you can continue to make payments. And if you can't, you're in real trouble. So again, let's, let's get the equations right because there are opportunities. They're not found on the MLSs. And there are creative ways that we can keep the money in the family and stop making the landlord rich and start building up our own wealth without buying high. So call 310-430-2397 or email info at nataliepace.com. Join us for our real estate masterclass this Saturday and join us for our next financial freedom retreat in October. If you would like to get an unbiased second opinion on your current wealth plan now so that you can make sure that you're properly protected, do call or email and I'm happy to reach out to you. Also, you can watch this back as well as our other free video conferences at youtube.com forward slash Natalie Pace. Also subscribe for our podcast on Substack. I wanna show you all of this is going to be available at nataliepace.com.
nataliepace.com. So be sure that you are going to nataliepace.com and you know getting again the most um, free, the most recent book uh, edition. Also, you can follow me on social. You can join us on our podcasts, and you can learn more about our next retreats, as well as our master classes are all listed in the menu. Now, there were a couple of questions that were emailed in that I want to answer. One was about two brokerages in Canada, and three of them actually, and the other one was about health savings accounts. So with regard to health savings accounts, I'm gonna answer that one first. Health savings accounts are for Americans, not Canadians. They work best when you are, it's like a retirement account, but you can withdraw the money if you need it for healthcare. They work best if you're healthy and young and you start young. I mean, you could be 40 or 50 and they still might be a game changer. For many people, they're gonna save you thousands, if not tens of thousands annually on healthcare premiums that you can keep and you get a tax credit so you can stop making the tax man rich. So they're really a game changer. However, as your clients sound like they're elderly and as you get closer to retirement, um, and if you're on Medicare, you cannot have one. You don't qualify, so you can't even do it. But as you get closer to retirement and you have health issues, then it might not be the right choice for you. Now, the other question was about Canadian brokerages. And what I wanted to talk about there was um, go ahead and talk a little bit about credit ratings. So we talk a lot about buying our funds from credit worthy fund companies and for banking with credit worthy banks, right? And even having our brokerage account with credit worthy brokerages. So let me give you the credit rating of a few things. I could not find a credit rating for Quest Trade or Wealth Simple. Quest Trade was founded in 2014, so it's pretty recent uh, by a youngster. Well, Simple's been around since 1999, so at least it's been around as long. BMO uh, Bank has a really high credit rating. I'll show you that in just a moment. In the US, Charles Schwab is rated A-. I, I do like the online discount brokers better than the legacy brokers because they, they actually are aligned with modern portfolio theory and regular rebalancing. Legacy brokers tend to rely on buy and hold strategies that are very expensive and keep you on the Wall Street roller coaster. So if you're leaning into in the US to credit quality for brokerages, Schwab might be a good choice. Also in our retreats, we talk about iShares because BlackRock is an AA minus rated fund company. So that's one of those reasons. But if we go back over to Canada, Bank of Montreal is A plus rated. So what I would say to you, um, you, you know, uh, M and A is that you guys might want to consider educating your daughter that apps that are more fun and gamified um, may not be the best choice, and you know she should be you know treating this not necessarily like an adult would treat it because she's you know she can take on more risk she's younger, but why not give her the life math that we all should have received in high school? She'll make better choices if she has that information. So I do encourage you to educate, teach your children well. All right, I'm going to leave it here. Thank you for joining me. Again, it's Natalie Pace, nataliepace.com. Join me this Saturday for our real estate masterclass, October for our financial freedom retreat. And if you want a sustainability adventure and all of our online training, then join us for our Royal Manor House retreat in March of 2025. It's right before the spring equinox and there's a special event that happens at Stonehenge. If you want to learn more, email info at nataliepace.com. Call us at 310-430-2397. And I will see you again. Again, be sure to share this with your friends. It's free. We have free video conferences on YouTube, uh, forward slash Natalie Pace, podcasts on Substack, Apple, Spotify. We have free blogs. We have the investor IQ test, the rebalancing IQ test, personalized pie charts. All of this is free. So do join our mailing list. Thank you. And I will see you again at our next free video conference.